All right, let's get to it. Extra time. Your questions in hand. Uh, Gab Marcotti is with us as well. Uh, JR, Jake Rubin, uh, quite simply, who can fix Arsenal, Craig? Wow. Nice simple job, eh? Nice simple question. Uh, I'm not sure there's a simple answer. There's not. <laughs> uh, well, a very good manager will go some way, mm. but then there's going to have to be a recruitment drive. Yeah. And players out and players in. So, I mean, it's not, I, th I think one man is not the answer. Right. Do you go, uh, you go a, uh, a Carlo Ancelotti, a Rafa Benitez, do you go in that direction if, you, uh, if you're Arsenal? I don't think that's something Carlo Ancelotti would want to do no. is go in there and completely restructure. Not right. sure Benitez would either. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I really don't know. I mean, I know Mikel Arteta's name has been mentioned and he's yeah. got some uh, some valuable experience with Manchester City, but I, I, but I think he, he might just sit tight where he is until mm. his boss makes a decision. Yeah. Vieira is another name that's come up. But, but he's struggling in France. I'm sure he's ready, is he? It's but... a tough job. Yeah, yeah. It's a tough job. I mean, Unai Emery's not a bad manager. Yeah. Gab, uh, Julian yesterday got very spiky about, about Arsenal. Uh, maybe maybe uh, you can have some soothing thoughts for him about who can fix him. Uh, well, the person to fix it, uh, there's two of them. They're called Cronkies. Uh, there's a father <laughs> and then there's a son. Um, and they need to get under the hood and they need to look at need to look at mistakes from the past that they can't fix uh, and mistakes from the past that, that they can fix. Uh, the simple reality of this club is that you've got four players who are all over or around 30 years old who are all on your books. Mesut Ozil, Alexander Lacazette, Pierre-Emerick, Alba Mayang, and Henrik Mkhitaryan, who's on loan, but could, co but could, could come back. Um, and you're not going to be able to sell these guys, or it's going to be very difficult to sell them or move them on. So whoever you bring in and whatever recruitment strategy you employ uh, has to be mindful of that. You have to have a clear idea of what you're going to do with those people, how you're going to operate uh, behind that. Uh, you've, you've, you've made Nicolas Pepe your, your record signing. I would assume you want, a, you want a manager who's going to figure out a way to get him on the pitch and get him working with those other big beasts that uh, I talked about. Jungberg is, is obviously trying to do that. Uh, I think they need to look top down at perhaps some mistakes that were made over the summer as well in the recruitment process. Uh, and see our Raul Sanyehi and, and Edu, Edu's just come in, but you know, how, where do they fit into the future? I think it has to start from there. And then once you decide what club you're gonna be, what medium term strategy you're gonna adopt uh, top down vis-a-vis -vis recruitment and players, then you think about who the right manager is to go and, uh, to go and fit that, whether it's Arteta, whether it's Eddie Howe, whether it's a bigger name manager like Rafa Benitez or whatever. But, but I think you have to do that first. You need a top-down review of what went wrong and why and what needs to be fixed. Just quickly, they've got 100 million or thereabouts, maybe plus, of talent in two players, uh, Pepe and Kieran Tierney, mm. uh, sitting on the bench, not, yeah. pl not playing. That, I mean, and and Tierney, to me, is mind-boggling. I, I don't know why well, he's not playing. Well, I think he's, he, he did have an injury when he yeah. came in and he was behind, but whether you're a Tierney fan or not, from his time at Celtic, and I hear he's a very good player, yeah. you're still sitting with over 100 million of summer signings basically not playing, yeah. which isn't ideal, of course. Gab, yeah, another simple question for you from Martin. Who's winning the Scudetto? Huh. Um... <laughs> I don't know. I mean, weirdly, I, we mentioned on the show, there's this huge game coming up for Inter against Barcelona. Uh, Conte's hoping it's going to be Barcelona's B team in midweek. Uh, if Inter get knocked out, I would put my money on them. Uh, if they stay in it, I think it's going to go down to the wire. And I think this is the year that, that they can do it. Mm. Um, I, I think weirdly, even in, in a game like, like we saw Friday night against Roma, where... You know, they weren't able to win. Uh, the strikers didn't have the best game, but they still created a lot of chances. They still conceded little. Um, and that's what you want to see if, if you're going to go and, and try to win the title. Yeah. Craig, uh, Brian is obviously very keen on the upcoming festive uh, 
period and all the games coming. Yeah, he wants to know your favourite Boxing Day memory oh. as a player. Oh. Oh. Was that always a tough day to play in as a player? Because, you know, uh. for, the, for the rest of the world, it's a big day of feeding and partying and resting. <laughs> and <laughs> Well, I don't, know, I don't remember too many games, but I, I just can't remember. Uh, in fact, a while ago I was talking to uh, uh, Nigel Winterwell, the former Arsenal left back. I was doing a programme with him and I said, do you, and he said to me, do you know, I can't remember half the games. Right. I can't, just can't, can't remember. Just but we, uh, so you'd, you'd, you'd go away, you'd train in Christmas morning and then, depending where you were playing, home or away, and then you'd go home, have Christmas dinner with the family or whatever. And then sometimes you'd come back Christmas night and go in a hotel, mm. or you'd travel, or you'd come in. I mean, so it was a real mishmash of where you were and try to get the uh, logistics all, all right. But no, I, as a player, you just become accustomed to the fact if you're playing in England... Right. You're going to play a lot of games. You're going to play a lot of games at Christmas and New Year. Yeah. I just can't remember. Uh, where they were, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, no such problems in Italy, Gab. Uh, uh, Leonardo, though, uh, does ask you, when you're going to talk about Cagliari, can they do an Atalanta? Why have they bounced so high, so quickly, from mid-table slash relegation to this? They've had a lot of things go their way. Nangolan certainly given them a, a, a lift. Cigarini as well. Uh, João Pedro, I think, has been a, a revelation uh, as a goal scorer. And, uh, and they have more to come. Uh, that said, look at their league position. I look at some of those you know, results that they got along the way. I also think they've kind of had a bit of the rub of the green until now. Mm. So, you know, at the risk of being Mr. Party Pooper, I don't see Cagliari finishing in the top four or anything like that. You know, I think they will probably finish somewhere between eight and 10 this season. Mm. Mm. Stands to be corrected. <laughs> no, and no repeat of Atalanta's uh, heroics from last year. Your memory banks, Craig, are going to be dipped into again. No. Let's see what we come up with this time. Your most memorable moment regarding football in this decade. So, I guess as a as a commentator and as an analyst. So, any uh, anything from, most memorable moment from regarding from football. From We're actually going to be doing something about this. Anything on, from 2010 uh, on, onwards. On our, our digital colleagues, uh, we are recording. Uh, something on this at the moment which is going to come up so if you're interested in this it's going to be everybody's views I'm sure yours as well uh, which I know one of the boys is putting together and it was to do with the decade so there's been there's a few the, one of the big ones for me and there's many for different people of the decade was I was fortunate enough to be at uh, the Etihad when Manchester City won the league for the first time uh, when Aguero scored that late yeah. goal 2012, yeah. Was that 2012? Yeah. yeah. And uh, I was on the commentary with Peter Drury, and it was such because Mancini was the manager, and I, I, I stand corrected. They were playing QPR. They'd already been relegated. Yeah. Joey Barton had been sent off. They yeah. were down to ten men. It doesn't get any better than that. And yet, in injury time, they'd still thrown it away somehow. And I can remember looking down from the gantry. And Roberto Mancini was on his knees in the touchline, mm. on his knees. I'm sure he was almost in tears because they had blown it. And then from nowhere, a bit of good play, lovely flick from Mario Balotelli, remember him? And Aguero scored that goal. And, Ed, yeah. honestly, I've been in some big atmospheres, but the place just yeah. erupted. Yeah. It was a, it was like one of those moments, just yeah. a magical moment. I think, I think mine, I'll get Gabs in a minute, but... Um, mine was a game you were also at, and maybe also did the, uh, oh, the Champions League final 2011 11. Barcelona. Best so football, best football I've ever seen. It was unbelievable, wasn't yeah. it? Just destroying Manchester United. A, I, uh, destroying a good Manchester yeah. United. Yeah, and even seeing their training session the day before <laughs> was, was was remarkable. They they were at the absolute peak. Gab, if you had to pick a moment from the from the decade, um, I was asked to do this too. I just haven't had my got my moments in. <laughs> I would have picked uh, uh, certainly the, the Aguero, uh, 93 minutes and 20 seconds. I think that would have been in there, though. I have to be pedantic and correct Craig. Uh, it wasn't their first league title um, because it was their first Premier League title, perhaps. Yeah. Uh, but that's but when football started. Third. <laughs> that's when football exactly. started. You know that. <laughs> um, 
I'm going to pick something that I don't actually know if it was this decade because he's been around a long time, but Slatan Ibrahimovic scoring those um, four goals against England, including that absurd uh, goal from, from way out. Uh, you know, after all the stick the guy had received about how he was a fraud and he couldn't do it in England or against English defenses and blah, blah, blah. Uh, that was uh, that was certainly pretty special. Um, and also, how could I not remember this? Leicester City winning the Premier League. Yeah. Memories indeed. Uh, more to come on that, uh, as Craig told you. Uh, tomorrow's show, uh, lots to get into, including the big Manchester derby and the Juventus trip to Lazio as well. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.